So most people, when they come of a certain age, whether it be 15, 16, for guys it's mostly like 18 or 21, something like that, um, you usually get a big party thrown in your honor because it's your coming of age party. Well, when I turned 16, my parents gave me the option to either have a big party that will only last one night, or I could go to New York, and I chose New York. Um, why New York? It's because when I was in fifth grade, we did a state report, and I chose New York because I have family over there that I've never been to New York or anything. But for about 10 years, that was all I could talk about. It's as if I had been there before, I'd seen everything, even though I'd never been there. I was just obsessed with it. So my parents finally said, okay, enough discussion about it, you've never been, so you're gonna go. And so um, I was very fortunate to be able to get to travel at a younger age. Um, I didn't start traveling when I was 16, I started when I was eight. We went to uh, Australia, which was absolutely amazing. And so today I'm gonna try and persuade you that you should travel. It's, um, there's different reasons that you can go along with it. Um, for the most one, or the three it could be, is learn different cultures, you get an education that you can't get in school, and you discover your personality. And so to begin, um, when you go and travel abroad, you um, don't necessarily speak the language, not everybody speaks English there, and so you're kind of forced to learn different languages when you go abroad. Um, whether it just be ordering food, finding a restroom, saying hello to someone, or just simple things in life, like trying to get around. Um, you're forced to learn different languages and try and figure your way out. You also have to learn different customs when you go abroad because not everything that's acceptable is acceptable here is always acceptable abroad. And then um, you learn different foods. Yes, in America we're very fortunate we have Indian food, Mexican food, just everything, especially in California. It's very broad for us, but when you go to different places, you learn different things about different places and how they live their lives. And so, especially different traditions and ways of life that other people have. We live in the city, so we're kind of sheltered from different things, but the Australians have the outback and the aboriginals and different places like that. Or even Africa with safaris, and you're not gonna see a lion walking down the street here in California. And so it's just different to be able to go different places and be able to see different things. And going back to how here, um, um, learning different things that you won't get in a school learning, or school setting. Um, when you're growing up, people say, oh, she's um, street smart or book smart. But when you travel, you're forced to become street smart. You have to rely on finding people to help you out, whether it be locals or just tour books or something like that. It's not necessarily, um, it's not an education that you can get in school. You have to go out and do different things to be able to figure out how to really survive. It's not in a manual. And so you also learn social skills about trying to open up to new people. You have to open up to locals and figure stuff out. And um, you also have to learn to be wiser with your money because when you travel, um, you can't just go to an ATM necessarily and pull out more money that's not there. So you have to learn to be wise with that. And, um, you can only spend so much and then you have to figure out because you can't get stuck in another country, that would be good. And so um, that goes along with being street smart and how you have to learn how to do that. But the third reason as to why I feel that travel is so important, and it was also in an article on Huffington Post, is that when you go out and travel, you discover who you really are. Because you've always been surrounded by friends and family who kind of dictate who you are as a person. But when you go out, especially when you travel by yourself, you really learn who you are. You can experience new things that somebody else might say, oh, well, I don't really want to do that. I don't want to go to this place. But when you travel, you're able to see how different people live, and then you can incorporate that into your own life as well. And um, you get to live in the moment, really. Like, you get to create all these new memories for yourself by going out to different places that you've never experienced here at home. And I just feel that you can truly discover who you are. And there's a quote, I can't remember who it was from, I believe it was an unknown, that said, I haven't gone everywhere, but it's on my bucket list. And so, um, I feel like that's a pretty cool quote because um, when you go out and you travel, you go learn who you are as a person. And so it's just pretty important, I feel. And then, um, a lot of you are probably thinking, oh, well, it's not just easy to pack up and travel. 
that there's responsibilities here at home. Some of us have wives and kids and pets, dogs that we love. But um, you'll never be as young as you are today. You'll never have the least amount of responsibilities as you have today, where you can pack up and go. And yes, it's expensive, but you won't have the bills that you'll have later on in life. And so um, if you go out and start living your life to the fullest, you will gain way more than you could in an office setting. And life experience. Life experience, or, sorry. So I urge you guys, especially now that summer's here, go out and live your life and make the memories that you want to have for the rest of your life. Because you always see people on Facebook or Instagram going out and having fun and you're sitting there thinking, oh, I wish I could do that. Well, I urge you, please go out, please travel, and come up with the best life that you could possibly have. Danny, share with us your insight into Heather's speech. Um, I like the uh, I like the stories. I like the intro. Uh, I like how you took us back when you were young and kind of uh, explained to us about uh, traveling. I wasn't really sure where it was going to go until you got into what your topic was about. Um, uh, I thought you were, were good up there, good with your speaking. You, you, you kind of you talk soft, but you still can be heard and. and uh, and uh, speak uh, eloquently. But um, you keep looking down at your notes, and it doesn't seem like you need to. Like, you know what you're going to say, because a lot of it too is a story, but I can see you looking down, so I'm going to clutch. If you're doing it, but you're not really reading anything, you keep looking back up and continue on with your story. Um, I thought you had your points well developed. You kind of uh, you pointed out pretty specifically one, two, and three. And uh, I like the, uh, the ending to the closing. You summed it up and kind of. Uh, uh, inspired us to uh, want to travel. I'm going to travel now. So. <laughs> All right. Um, I like the opening. I like the attention device. Uh, your story about uh, getting an opportunity to travel to New York. I wanted to hear a little bit of what happened when you went to New York, and we never got any of that. So that felt a little bit less than satisfying. But I like the idea behind telling that story. Uh, you do identify your purpose statement. I thought that that was effective. There's a good preview, so we know kind of where you're headed. It's not a traditional problem, uh, cause, solution structure, but it's uh, easy to follow. And I think that in a very general sense, it is persuasive in nature, although I do think that there needs to be a little bit more argument built into this. This is, I think you could put, you know, frankly, I think you could have given this speech the day I gave the assignment. You know, I don't know that there's a lot of work that went into the presentation. I think you could have stood up and told us that story and made that, those same kinds of recommendations like an impromptu speech because there's not really a lot of content in the presentation. There's good ideas, and I was waiting for those ideas to be filled in a little bit. So when you mentioned, for instance, traveling to all those different places and eating different foods or customs, I'm going, okay, and where are the examples of those kinds of things? And when you went to Australia, what was different about your experience? And what's, what's the unique thing that you learned? And uh, what do authorities say is the vast difference between the cultures? Or uh, what piece of information did you gain that you couldn't have gained from a book? Uh, any of those kinds of things would be the kind of stuff that would help fill in and make your what's basically a motivational presentation a little bit more persuasive in nature, a little bit more convincing. Uh, I think you get do well on the ethos part of the presentation because you're speaking from experience and you've got your own enthusiasm about doing this. Uh, but you're not getting as much out of the uh, logos and pathos as you ought to. Uh, there's not, like I said, on the logos, there's not a lot of research. I heard one reference to a Huffington Post article, and that was 
It's a little noisy, folks. Thank you. Um, there was one reference to this article, and I, w I couldn't even tell where th whether w there was a quote there or an example or a fact that you were trying to cite. It was a very kind of oblique reference. And then that was the only thing where I heard any reference to any particular material uh, other than kind of your enthusiastic interpretation of this experience. So like I said, I, I, you're, you're trying to sell this based on your persona, and I think there's some good things about that. Danny, I think, said it right. Look, you sound like you know what you're talking about. You sound pretty confident. Um, you undermine that by having to speak uh, from one side of the room behind the podium. That's a little distracting. And I think he mentioned that you went to the notes a lot. I've noticed that you usually looked at us, but I'd agree with him. It seemed like you kept looking down, thinking that was something was going to appear on the notes down there that wasn't there. And, you know, if I look again, maybe something else will be there. But there's you're doing fine. I just think, like I said, there needed to be a little bit more content. Um, I think maybe you could get a little bit more uh, emotional involvement in your voice. I like the, uh, the quote that you had at one point that's kind of a generic quote, you know, I haven't been everywhere, but it's on my bucket list. That's kind of a fun idea there. That's a good concept to get people to kind of visualize the idea behind travel. So I think you're on the right track here. It, it just needs... Uh, more content and uh, a little bit more development. As a subject, I think it works. I think you have a, a good like sense of what it is you're trying to say on the subject, uh, but you gotta be a little bit more convincing with your information. All right, thank you.